everybody. Hello, hello, hello. You guys, whoever is coming in now, since you're like one of the first people jumping on my live and I'm driving, let me know if the lighting is okay, if you can see me okay, etc. I gotta I can't put the light on in the inside of the car, so I have like my visor thing open. So just let me know if you could see me. I am driving back towards the recovery house from the airport and I have a few things I wanted to talk about and I haven't had a chance to jump on so I figured what a better opportunity than now that I'm alone in the car and that I could talk to you guys um, super freely and all that kind of stuff. Only thing is I gotta turn this because this is like driving my face a little bit crazy. How are you guys? Everybody doing good? I wanted to um, come by tonight because I wanted to talk to you guys about a few things. Um, and I don't know, you know, like I said, I don't know. I know there'd be people coming in and out and moving around, but um, I want to really talk about something. And I know that this video is going to get recorded and I'm going to share it. So I will let you know. Can I tell you if Dr. Bias is an efficient doctor? Mommy, I really don't even know who Dr. Bias is unless you're talking about Bias Angeles, who's in Santiago. He is one of my surgeons, but I don't, I haven't worked with him in quite a while and he's far from where I'm at. So if that's the person that you're referring to, Dr. Baez Angeles, that's in Santiago, not in Santo Domingo, that one I could tell you about. If you're talking about another Dr. Baez, I have no idea. The person's not even on my radar. The name doesn't even hit my head as something that's familiar. So I'm sorry about that. But I wanted to talk to you guys because I've had this on my head for about a month now, to be a thousand percent honest. And things have popped up several times like in the recovery house well things pop up all the time hi boo boo my daughter's there i just dropped her off you already back with me so things happen at the recovery house all the time right because whenever you're dealing with people whenever you're dealing with patients whenever you're dealing with um customer service or just anything and, and people that are post-op or not post-op just people in general everybody wants or needs something else everybody has you know their own thing and everybody is weird in their own way like I say so we embrace the weirdness and we do as much as we can um, but sometimes things that happen in the recovery house or things that I see happening make me want to go live and make me want to address certain things but and I used to do this a lot back in the day like when we first opened um, CDNA Surgical I, I okay so I wanted to open this company my education and my professional career is in care coordination and healthcare coordination and in mental health. I'm a licensed therapist, but not only am I a licensed therapist, I've been working in, in care and health coordination for over 20 years. That, that's been my bread and butter. Advocacy, patient advocacy, standing up for you, getting what you need, da 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 da. And so when I opened this company, it was a little bit different because although it was medicine and stuff like that and it was still advocacy and it was still helping you know it was something that wasn't super serious or wasn't something that was so although it is serious it wasn't like cancer or drug rehab it was like a fun type of a serious and so I was really happy about getting involved in it and things like that but I had to learn you know in the beginning that sometimes talking about things when they happen make people feel bad and a lot of times I don't do it well I never do it to target the patient and I never talk about things because I want the patients to feel bad or I want them to feel put on the spot or never but a lot of times the things that happen with the patients or a lot of times the things that the patients do are not things that are isolated to that one loca sometimes these things are done repeatedly by patients and some of them are like terrible things and then some of them are just like honestly honest mistakes that we need to talk about because if we don't talk about them you guys will make these mistakes and they will target you but back in the day I used to like have stuff happen and I would jump online and I'd be like hey we gotta talk this and this and this and this but it was just because I was like hyper worried about anybody making mistakes because I didn't want anybody to make mistakes I wanted everything to be perfect and five years down the line you know we've realized that not everything is gonna be perfect but everything will be okay and you know, for over 4,000 girls later, you know, I've made sure that each and every one of my girls are okay. Um, and so I wanted to talk to you guys about something because honestly, it, it pisses me off like, like nobody's business. 
but that's a personal thing it pisses me off but you guys will never know it but it does it really really bothers me and i want to talk about it and i want to talk about it today because there's nobody in my house that's doing this <laughs> and there's nobody that will feel targeted um so i want to have the conversation now i think that thank you Jeannie. i feel much better honey it's ugh, it's been it's been a fucking mission girl um but so i wanted to talk to you guys today specifically about what what's been on my mind because it complicates a lot okay it complicates a lot so let's jump right in enough with all the prefacing so the main conversation and the main thought that i want to give you today and i want to leave you with so you can sit with it is that i want you to understand i provide a lot of support and i create environments where you guys have a lot of support i.e our private whatsapp chat group are like all of that and so we have a lot of services that are there for you to not feel alone right for you to have a surgery sister for you to have somebody to kind of go through this process with for you to have people that are in your corner cheering you on and there for you and the whole nine right all of that and i think that's super important specifically because this is the one type of medical procedure that most of us don't have the right support for most of us don't get the support from our family or for our friends for this type of surgery because they think it's crazy or because you're gonna go to the ER or because of whatever the fuck they think they don't support you so a lot of times I like to make sure that my girls that have been with me can reassure the girls that are coming or the girls that are coming have somebody that they can say hey you know I'm going there alone but if you're going too, I can't wait and we can create familiarity and that is dope that is the reason why I do that but one of the things that I want to tell you one of the things that I need you to know that is the biggest mistake that most of the patients make is that you start trusting the other patients more than you trust me I need you to understand that it is the stupidest and the biggest mistake you could ever 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 make number one the people that you meet at the recovery house are not in their normal condition nor in their normal state that's number one number two they're medicated and they're not in the right mind three they feel that they have researched and studied enough for them to feel comfortable but you have to understand that what works for them what worked for them what they know their circumstances their condition their post-op condition their complications all of that has nothing to do with you and may not work for you so what happens and I see this a lot is that you'll get a new girl who step into the recovery house and there'll be people who may have been here for 10 days or seven days or whatever and they're doing something a little bit differently than what I recommended or they're doing something differently because either they have another doctor that's not mine and they're just recovery patients I didn't coordinate them or because of whatever reason and I gotta remind you guys over and over and over that more than 90% of my patients choose to come with me not because they know anything about the surgeon they picked not because you know the surgeon you like the surgeon most of you guys come to me and say cherry whoever you think is best for me be honest with me whoever you think or whatever you think or where do you think i should go i have to stay with you i need your recovery i need your advocacy i need this i need this i need this so why is it that when you get here and you've already flown across the country to get to my house flown across the country to lay on a table where you could die but you've taken my choice blindly you've taken my quote blindly you've taken my recovery house blindly you've let me prepare you blindly before surgery all of these things but you get here and now the girl who has surgery two days before you who you don't know is a crackhead and a prostitute and whatever else because I can't share that information with you is now all of a sudden the fucking the God in the house and has everybody changing their plans it's not appropriate and it's not okay equally like when you have girls that come in and they have a service it recently happened in my house there was a girl who came she had a complication with her body there wasn't a complication from surgery it wasn't anything anybody did her body produced this uh, fluid that becomes more fibrous faster than normal 
right? I've never seen this in the over 4,300 girls that I have serviced in my career. I have never, Alfredo and I have never had a patient whose fluid turns into fibrosis automatically. We've not. So Alfredo was treating her and he was like, every day, he was like, I see her getting harder and harder. I don't understand. I'm gonna work on it, I'm gonna work on it, I'm gonna work on it. When she went to see her doctor, her doctor was concerned and was like, man, you know, let's try to get a second opinion because at this point, you know, we gotta figure something out for this girl. So we were like, all right, cool, let's get, you know, get the second opinion and figure out what we need to do to get her where she needs to be. Like, let's see a specialist for this. Well, the girl ended up going to the specialist and for the condition that she had, that lady worked out really well for her in the sense that that lady was able to give her some type of treatment. I don't really know if the lady actually resolved the issue. I actually doubt that she did, but the patient was happy with whatever she received from that, the service she received from that lady and decided that she was gonna finish off her treatment with her because, you know, she had this condition, she had this complication and the lady seemed to have had some expertise in this area. Totally fine. But the problem comes in when now you're telling all the girls in the group to go to this massage therapist. First of all, you don't know that that lady even does good in post-op massage because what she did for you was not post-op massage. That's the first thing. The second thing is I don't know this lady from a hole in the wall. She cannot come to my recovery house because that's my name and my license and me going to jail. So no, she can't come and work in my, in my recovery home because my recovery home is a, is a medical facility. Just like I can't go into any hospital and draw your blood because I'm licensed to draw blood. It doesn't work like that. So she can't come to my house. So now that means I gotta put you in a cab and I gotta send you out to a place I don't know, to a person I don't know, to somebody who's gonna charge you, I don't know what. And the reality is, let's keep it funky. This is the Dominican Republic. It is a poor country. The hustle game here is disgusting. It's ugly. It's nasty. There's very little ethics in elective medicine. You guys got to understand that. Even some of the doctors, if you don't see the news, then I'm sorry. But even some of the doctors are some of the most gutter, gutter, gutter people you will ever meet. And you will get robbed by the doctor because they're telling the secretary to rob you. Because this country is a poor country and you got people out here that end up going to school but they don't lose their poor habits and they keep hustling and taking advantage because they think you got more than what they got. So yeah, sometimes I'm not the most friendly and sometimes I'm not the most he 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 but this ain't social media. I gave up my whole life and I moved to another country because as a cancer patient, I came to have surgery and I was treated foul by my coordinator and my recovery homeowner. And I ended up homeless two days after my surgery because they put me out because they robbed me and then threatened me with their police, okay? So you gotta understand that when I get pissed off because y'all wanna venture out, because y'all wanna go out, understand, I work with so many people that are not my husband. Understand, I don't make extra for sending you to get your hair done in a special place. I don't make extra and I put that on my children. Yo, I charge you a transportation package. You can ask any of the thousands of girls that have stayed in my house. I charge you a transportation package. What's included in your package is what you pay me. Whatever else you do, that's on you and you pay the driver, whatever you figure out. I don't got nothing to do with that. I don't make extra or for nothing. Whatever you gotta pay for is what you pay for and I don't look to hustle for nothing. I don't look for tips. I don't look for none of that. But you gotta understand that when you make these decisions because your friend who came from Massachusetts sitting next to you decided that she wanted to do whatever, you're gonna end up jacked up. And then it becomes, you leave, you leave pissed at me, you leave because you, you know, your time is up, but now you leave and you're pissed off, your scar don't look right, you're upset about the massage, but you did what you wanted to do and I'm not gonna argue with you. I tell every single one of you that have watched my page, or that have had a consultation with me, the same thing. My trademark is I am not here to dictate your choices, I am here to support them. So if that is the case, and you wanna jump off the fucking bridge, ho, I'm here like this. You understand? I titties that's gonna fall tomorrow because she told you do the internal bra and it's not an infection and it's gonna and I know it's gonna cause an infection but that's what you want to do and you choose to listen to the person in the bed next to you like you got to understand that there's gonna be times during this process 
you're gonna go through an emotional roller coaster there's days you're not gonna like me y'all y'all gotta understand there's days that you're gonna be pissed off at me for no reason you're gonna be pissed off at me because the light went in the recovery you're gonna be pissed off at me because you don't got enough pillows that day or because you don't feel good that day or because the nurse didn't rub you enough that day or because you didn't go get a massage on time everything falls back on me and I don't think people realize that you know and I didn't realize that when I opened this business when I opened this business and I started coordinating I said I want to create a recovery home because I want my girls to have a safe place how can I promise them all of this and then I can't give them a place to be right so I opened the recovery house but then I'm running the coordination right so I'm talking to you guys like I'm doing right now I had to create an American quality an American standard roster for you guys to feel safe to come here because way too many girls are dying so I had to go through going to meet doctors finding doctors doing background checks on them checking their license checking their insurance to make sure that you're gonna be safe hiring staff watching the staff doing the recovery doing the food shopping doing the supply bags going to Colombia to build you a good faja because you're getting ripped off I'm doing everything so at the end of the day, I can't be everywhere. And I have a team of people that work. But you guys got to always remember, I'm here for you. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. The girl sitting next to you, also as cocky as she is and as much as she thinks she knows, she's here also because of me. There's people on this chat that I've talked to for over a year, a year and a half, two years. You don't understand how much I cheer you guys on, how much I pray for you all. Like, yo, that shit brings tears to my eyes. You don't understand how invested I am in you guys being well. That you see me, I don't even look pretty. I can't tell you the last time I did my hair, my eyelashes, the last time I got ready or anything because I dedicate so much of myself to you. Like, I'm down to like, give up everything I have to make sure that you come here and you're okay because I know what it's like to, to want so badly to change and to work so hard to get here for some fucking horrible fucking broke ass person to come and take advantage of you or steal from you or that's or, or make you sick and, and you gotta come back or somebody to tell you oh that's too many procedures come back because they want you to pay again you know what I mean like Dude, I know what we can do, and I know what we can't, and I will never put you in danger. But you got to understand, the emotional roller coaster that I talk about is very real. You guys go through a bunch of stuff during this recovery process. The first few days, you're excited, and you tell yourself you're going to be strong, and because you heard me talk about the recovery roller coaster, so you're going to be strong, and blah, blah, blah. But after the first three days... You're tired, just like everybody else. And you get cranky, just like everybody else. And you do all these things like everybody else. So the first three days, you're strong. It's like, and I'm gonna do the recovery roller coaster real quick, cause it's important. So you know when you go to an amusement park and you see a roller coaster, the first thing you gotta do is get on that long ass line. That long ass line is this, what we're doing right now, the chatting, the excitement. Oh my God, I'm going. Oh my God, it's real. Oh my God, oh my God. What are we going to get on? We're going to get on the next one? Oh my God, there's like three more people in front. I think we get on the next one. So, so we're waiting and we're excited, right? That's, that's the first part. Sorry, that was Alfredo. He's calling me. He's trying to figure out where I'm at because I know he got to go do a massage. So, um, so now... The first three days, uh, or the beginning, you get here. You're looking at the roller coaster, you're about to get on the ride. Now you're seated and you got your seatbelt on, right? You're like, whoop, guess what? You landed here in DR, you're excited. <laughs> guess what? The ride takes off and the ride starts slow. Unless you're like a psycho roller coaster in Six Flags, the rides usually take off slow. Click, 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 click. That's pre-op. During pre-op, you're nervous. During pre-op, you're frustrated. During pre-op, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Tomorrow. And you're excited and you're nervous and it's a hurry up and wait. And then the next day, you're at the top of the roller coaster and it's about to go click, click. So what happens? You're up here, click, click, click. They're going to give you that pain meds. They're going to give you that sedation, that sleeping, and you're going to go like this. So now the excitement where we usually go, woo, right? That part, you're knocked out for. So you don't get to enjoy that. And when you wake up, you wake up in a world of pain. 
and you wake up and you're like, damn, I knew it was gonna hurt. Okay, all right, it's gonna hurt, but they're gonna give me this. It's gonna hurt, but it's gonna give me this. And you keep trying and you keep trying and you keep trying to be patient. You keep trying to like, you know, get through. But like I said, after the first three days and you don't sleep, after the first three days and you, you're cranky, you haven't eaten, you can't get comfortable, everything bothers and that's natural, that's normal. You know what I mean? So that happens. And then after you finally get over the hump of that, so the first three days you're being strong. Day four, day five, day six, you're gonna have an attitude, you're not gonna like me, you're gonna feel frustrated, you're gonna hate everybody. You might have one nurse who's like your favorite, but you're gonna hate everybody because that's what happens with almost everybody. And then day seven, eight, nine, you start feeling better, you start to feel better, and guess what? We're your favorite people again. Now you wanna know where I can take you to get your eyelashes done, and where you could get your hair done, and where you could do this, and where you could do that, and then, when you're like around day 10, 11, you get close to when you're going home. So now you open and you want to go shopping or you want to do something. So you got to understand that, you know, recovery is a process and it's freaking hard. It is not easy. Listen, I had two children and I went through cancer. And honestly, the hardest thing I ever went through was a lipo BBL post-op recovery. And I had a stage four cancer. <laughs> okay. So honestly, like this is not light. So, you know. You come here and you're going through all those mental and emotional changes and you bond with the person who's next to you, like trauma bonding. And, you know, bye, Rita. I'll talk to you soon. Um, but, you know, you, you end up in a situation where you trauma bond with these people because you're all in pain or you all hate me that day <laughs> or whatever's going on. Because in reality, I wish, I wish Jesus Christ was like my brother and I had as much power to be everywhere and do everything like he can, but I can't. And so I'm always trying, you guys. I'm one person. Like, I get up at 4.30 in the morning and I'm texting the girls in the recovery house and they can tell you. I text at, at 4.30 in the morning to make sure that pain management is good, that they got their pain meds, that they feel okay. I'm up in the morning. I'm checking on who's flying in, who's still in the hospital. Also, do you guys know that I also train the doctors? The doctors that we have, like, for example, Karini or whoever else, like, I work with them so that they can understand how to work with you as Americans or Europeans or Canadians or just people from more modern cultures and who have access to things. They, got, they don't understand. Imagine if you lived in a world that never had access to half of the things that you have access to. They don't even know how to even think about them because it's like, imagine if I told you that there was a flying swimming pool. You'd be like, a what? You'd be, you wouldn't even know how to think about it in your head. You'd be like a flying swimming. Well, so it's like that with them, with some of the things that we have access to, even the way our hospitals are, the way our doctors treat us, the way that we have access to things. So I make sure that when you get here, everything I tell you or I offer you, I can deliver to you. And that's really important for me. So I need you guys to understand that this process can be a little tumultuous. It can be a little bit difficult. You know, but I promise you, whether you leave out of here liking me or not, I love each and every one of my girls. I am completely invested in your well-being. Whether you leave out of here hating me or you leave out of here liking me and loving me, I'm always, always um, humble because I know how much trust it took for you to come here and be with me. I also know how much trust it took for you to lay on that. Sorry, sorry. I felt it was like blowing me up. So, yeah, I also know that I made sure that you didn't die on that table. Whether you like me or not, whether you leave happy or not, I make sure that no matter what, you went to the right place. You went to the right place, that you're feeling good, that you went to a doctor that didn't. Because before, remember, I'm sorry, you guys, my phone, I'm getting home. So, my Wi Fi connected and everything else. But, you understand what I'm saying? So before that, you cry to me, tell me how you're so afraid, how you just want to make it home, how you want to do this, but you just want to make it home. And I make it happen for you. So when you get here and, and things go a little bit differently than you expected, or it's not the way that you thought or anything, 
the same way you want people to be gentle with you, be gentle with me, but also be gentle with yourself. You know, also understand that the girls that are with you, they mean well. And they want to tell you, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Velasquez, Hugo girl. I'm sorry. It's no, it was no hate on um, Massachusetts. Um, but, you know, the girls that are here, they mean well. And they, they're not advising you because they mean to hurt you or because they're trying to be shady or whatever else. But at the same time, you got to remember a few things. One, I gave up my life to do this for you guys, right? And this is my bread and butter. This is my career. This is how I make my money. This is how I feed my family, right? So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is... You came all the way over here because of me. Chances are, had you not met me, chances are, had you not talked to me, you might not have felt comfortable or confident enough to come all this way, to finally take that jump, to finally see somebody, right? And so just remember that. Remember that I'm the same person. Remember that when you get here, I'm busy. <laughs> I'm going through a lot because I'm always doing stuff, but I'm always doing stuff for you guys. You know, you'll notice that in the last few months, I've not been posting many videos of myself. I've not been doing much for myself. I've not been showing myself. And it's been because things here have been very busy during COVID um, and during like October, November, December, things get very slow financially because people don't come in. Having a recovery house means that I have to pay rent, light, bill, cable, and thousands of dollars in staffing, whether you guys come or not. Right now, I have no real patience for the month of February, and that means that I still have to pay all of those bills, plus my kids' tuition, plus everything else. And remember that for me, my patients or my customers, they're only good once every six to 12 months because you guys can't come back. No, I have to constantly be hustling and I don't hire people just willy nilly because I honor each and every one of you way too much to put you at risk to work with somebody that may not match my ethics. So I'm sorry that you haven't seen me as much. I'm sorry that I look haggard. I'm sorry that I look tired. I'm sorry that I'm not in the clinic where you want me to be as much as you want me or need me to be. Um, I'm I'm doing the best that I can right now. You know, my family has gone through a lot. Also, since Thanksgiving, our fertile sister passed away, which caused his mother to have a stroke and seizures. And now she's very, very sick. Um, you guys know that she was up and about and trying to find a boyfriend uh, not that long ago. And we just found out that her cancer has spread uh, pretty significantly. And she had a stroke and some seizures. She just lost her daughter. And so we're we're in, we're in a process of a lot of transition right now. And I'm not able to express my emotions or my feelings to my family or to anybody else because I just got to kind of keep my head strong for you guys um, and, and for my husband and for what's happening. So I, I, as always, you know, I make it my business to always be transparent with you guys. Um, I have had doctors and people tell me that maybe it wasn't the best ideas. I've had people tell me that, oh, it doesn't look the most professional, this, that, and the third. I am not trying to be a company that you'll never know who the owner is. I'm not trying to be a company like, for example, Best Buy or Sony, where like you'll never know who Mr. Sony is. You guys, this company is a company that came out of my heart. It is called Sirena Surgical, but most of the doctors think my name is Sirena for some reason, the ones that don't know me. Um, and there's patients that refer to me as Sirena, you know what I mean? And so. This company, it, it, it really is my heart, and I, I do as much as I can. Like I said, I'm an imperfect person, and life happens and all that stuff, but I do everything that I can to make sure that you guys are okay. So I ask that if you need anything, just talk to me. You know, sometimes people think I'm too busy or I got so much going on, and I do have a lot going on, but I promise you that if I have um, 24 hours in the day, there's always enough time for me to attend to my girls first. Um, so just know that. And like I said, I apologize because I haven't been around. It's just been very, very difficult, both financially and just, you know, in, in the everyday run around. I haven't been able to like look at my nails. <laughs> I haven't been able 
able to get my nails done. I haven't anything. I had to get through payroll right now. I've been going through a lot. You know, we're going through it. But we're here. You know what I mean? And honestly, no matter what is happening in my life, no matter what's happening in my world, the fact that I know that we're making change and that we're doing good for you guys, it makes my hard days worth it. It makes the bad days good. So I'm always grateful for you. And I appreciate you. And I appreciate everything that you guys offer in terms of support and your kind words and your trust is the most important if you need anything please make sure that you reach out to me i'm always here i'm always happy to answer no matter the time um and i'm hoping i'll see you soon with that i'm gonna let you guys go i love you guys viola i love you viola we've been talking for a while i'm so dying to get you here i can't wait to see you Jeannie. i love you i haven't seen you in forever but genie's been my friend since we've been like 15 16 I'm about to be 40 this year. Shh. <laughs> but, um, but I love you guys. So with that, I'm going to let you go. I hope everybody has a wonderful evening. God bless you. And if you need anything, let me know. You're in my prayers. So don't think that nobody's praying for you because I am.